Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, a quick question for you all. If I were to ask you about cruise ships or cruising, what kind of images would that conjure up? And the reason I ask this is Virgin Voyages is attempting to build a new narrative that its ships will be cooler and edgier that's currently on the market, and it's looking to disrupt the entire industry. But I want to learn more about the role of technology and how that is going to transform the customer experience. So today, here in Salt Lake City, Utah, I'm at the X4 event, and I've invited Tamara Pluvios, Director of Digital Strategy here at Virgin Voyages. Voyages, And she owns the B2C and B2B digital experiences at Virgin Voyages. And part of that is ownership of the strategies and tactics that deliver more human brand experiences. So we'll talk about a few of the things that need changing in the cruise industry, set the scene on what's out there at the moment, and how Virgin Voyages is using technology alongside strategy, tactics, and Qualtrics, etc. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Utah, where tomorrow is waiting to speak with us. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Hi, everyone. My name is Tamara Pluvios. I am a head of digital strategy and optimization for Virgin Voyages. And that means a lot of things and also not a lot of things, but essentially I'm in charge of uh, the digital experience and optimizing it to the best of the ability to get customers to do the something, either engage with content, become a lead, ultimately book with us, and then prep for their voyage before they start to sail. And so I look at all stages of the digital journey and try to uncover those pain points to ensure that we're meeting these unmet needs and also maybe doubling down the stuff that might be more positive as an experience to our sailors. Incredibly cool. There's so much we've got to talk about today. But before we do, we're recording on day two of X4. So I've got to ask, is this your first time at X4? And what have you enjoyed so far? And how would you describe the experience to, your listen- uh, to everyone listening? This is definitely my first time. Yeah. Um, I would say, being very honest, being around 10,000 people is a little intimidating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's been amazing. I actually really enjoyed the keynote speakers. Um, they were all really great. Usually at these kinds of conferences, sometimes you see a little bit more selling or a high level of something, and they're grounding on what's real and how you can kind of apply it to your individual companies. Um And I've gotten a lot from um, the demos that they've been showing as well. The products are very interesting, um, as well as uh, some of my favorite keynote speakers. I really loved Malala's uh, take on, you know, equity, gender equity for education access, and also making sure that people are in the room uh, who are building and designing experiences so that you're making sure that you're not leaving anyone behind when you think about that. Um, I forget the gentleman's young name from uh, the CEO from Sherm, but he was in. Yes, 100%. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry that his uh, session had to be so brief, but uh, very engaging, very grounded in reality of like what employee engagement is about and really dealing in facts and how you can deal with that. And then, of course, Martha Stewart was so cool. Um, loved seeing her and really understanding like how she's constantly learning um, to be able to get ahead of the game and ultimately innovate. Yeah, 100% with you on all of those. And, and back to your work here for a moment. I mean, you run B2C and B2B digital experiences at Virgin Voyages. And most people listening will know all about the brand Virgin. They'll have a perception of what that brand is. But can you just set the scene and tell everyone what Virgin Voyages is, just for anyone that hasn't heard of it? All right, so the first thing, right, it's a cruise line, even though the cruise is not in our name. Uh, And the reason that we hung our hat on that term specifically is that we're looking at cruise a little differently. It is about that adventure and escapism and having an amazing experience, whether you're on the ship or on the shore. Um, And making sure, at least from my standpoint, that before you even get on the ship, that you have some of the best digital experiences as well, because that's setting the tone for how your, your vacation, your escape, your voyage will be. Three or four key things that we are definitely very different in the space for is that we're adults only. Um, so no kids allowed. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be 18 and over to sail. Um, so that really is uh, a differentiator for us. It's one of the top reasons people actually book with us or consider us as a brand as well. Um, I think another thing is around our food. Uh, very much so leaning into the lack of the buffets, having Michelin star chefs actually cater and cultivate the experience and not having a limit to dining. I think a lot of people think that it's uh, you and endless lines of buffets and ultimately 
Um, there's only certain restaurants you can go to. You have to dress a certain kind of way or, or things like that. And it really is about coming as you are and experiencing some really good food uh, sourced locally and also uh, in a way that you, you're you free to go wherever you want to to enjoy that. Again, one of the seconds yeah. you watch you book with us. Um, and then it's really about the experience. I think Virgin as a whole, as a mother brand, has really hung their hat on building these exceptional amazing experiences and we definitely are staying true to that and making sure that no matter what it is that you need or what you want that we're making it as seamless and as um, authentic as possible as well and so those are like our three core pillars and what we want to make sure people see if they're learning about us as a brand and ultimately what they're experiencing um and then I would say the last one is really around the destinations themselves so not just going to port and knowing that you have like a a finite amount of time to experience. So we have uh, unique ports that we go to, overnight stays at some of them as well, and uh, partnering with the local um, economy as well to make sure that we're partnering with people for, we call them short things, but your short excursions, uh, to get the best out of that experience too, so that they're also very memorable whether you're whether you're on the ship. Wow, incredibly cool. I love how you're challenging people's perception of that traditional approach to cruise. Is that? And the first time I heard about it was, I think it was when the, uh, originally designing Virgin Voyages and those experiences. I think it was Richard Branson that said they, that you had started working on all the things that were wrong with the cruise industry and made sure that those were addressed and then making the ship the best sailing in the seas. So can you expand on what was wrong and the old, especially with that old way of doing things that we were talking about there? Because as you were naming a few of them, I think we all thought it probably put you an eye off from cruising in, in the past. Um, so... Funny enough, in my career, half of it has been spent in cruising. Some of the things I really love, some of the things I really like. I don't like. I don't think we like the idea of saying that things are wrong. I think what Virgin, the brand, is known for is making experiences better in general, right? And so, uh, Sir Richard really wanted to dip his toe in this. He had been thinking about cruising for a really long time before we built it. I started at the company almost four years ago. It had already been something that was coming to fruition and in planning for five years before that. Um, and so the idea around it was really challenging the norms of what people think cruising is. I think as a business, um, just thinking from the U.S. Uh, standpoint, uh, just for that, even though I, we love our UK <laughs> brethren, <laughs> but it really is like there's only so much of the pie that knows about cruising in general. And then you have to think about how crowded that space is. And so there are a lot of misconceptions around cruising. I personally love cruising uh, before even I was at Virgin. And I love the idea of it being like almost a package deal when you think about it, right? Like you really just need to figure out where you need to go, where you're laying your head, where you party, if that's what you want to do, where you choose to relax, um, how, what level you want to do with that is actually and where you eat all covered when you think about that. If you think about the full vacation planning experience, but some people have negative connotations. They think it's for older people. They think it's for people who want to be in these endless lines of buffets. Uh, that it's a bunch of kids screaming and water slides and things like that. And some some parts of it are. But what we're trying to showcase is the ability for you to voyage your, on your own terms. So whether it is you wanting to party, whether it is you wanting to relax, whether you want a luxurious experience, uh, whether you want to just explore someplace you've never been before, the idea is to give you that option. And the ship and what makes it stand apart is it's essentially an adult playground. Like if you ever go on, I definitely encourage you if you want to fly over to Miami, I will personally give you a tour of the ship myself, um, is there are all these beautiful spaces where you can just be. You can enjoy the fine dining. You can just hang out on a day bed. You can go play games in the arcade. Uh, you can hang out in your suite or your your cabin, just enjoying, you know, a nice nap on the hammock in the, ca- in the balcony. Um, and so I think it's really more about giving you options where I think the perception from a uh, negativity standpoint for cruise is that it's limited, it's crowded, it's packed. And that's not really what cruising is. And I think that's part of uh, the uniqueness that Virgin shows you is that there is a different way to cruise and we're the best place to do it. And as this is a daily tech podcast, I've got to ask, because one of the things that I like to try and do is get people thinking about how technology is impacting all aspects of our lives, especially areas that you wouldn't imagine. Let's take, for example, a cruise ship. So can you tell me more about the role of technology and how that's helping Virgin deliver those more human brand experiences? But you don't actually see the tech, uh, or it's seamless, isn't it? It's invisible. Absolutely. So I, I want to start with where my passion lies, first of all, which is 
the website experience. So if you think about us as a brand, we didn't exist <laughs> five years ago, right? Um, and then when we opened up for business to sell, we didn't even have a ship in the water. We were still building it. So how do you sell that experience to people who may have some biases around cruising, first of all, who don't know who we are? And then we're demanding a premium price. So it's also understanding that value and then making it real for them. Because the dream is what we call an aspect of vacation planning is actually a combination of very rational things that you need and practical. And then that dreaming, exploration, finding out these new things. And so a big core piece of that for us is making sure the technology makes sense, is seamless and works for you from the beginning to the end. And so making sure we have a visually led website, but manage the technical, balance it out as well, and making it as seamless as possible. Let's make sure we're not overwhelming you with content um, so that you get the information you need. And then making sure your booking process is as seamless as possible too, because nothing's more nerve wracking, especially with more people booking on their phones than dropping (laughs) $3,500. Don't know what that creates to the pops, but, you know, spending that kind of money, like you want to feel comfortable with that. You want to feel this, the security in that, too, on, on your phone or on your desktop. Like that, that that's important. The technology is consistent and it, it's easy for you to do. But then um, the other piece of it that's a little bit different than what other lines do is we have a sailor app and that app helps you with prepping pre-voyage. So making sure you have all the things that you need prior to you boarding so that it makes your embarkation as smooth as possible too. It gets you informed and gets you excited. Yeah, because the we believe that engaging with a a customer and the experience comes from beginning to end. So even after you book, we're not done with you, right? We want to make sure you feel excited about and engaged. And part of that is through our communications. Another piece of that is through uh, making sure the technology is, is very much so stable and giving you what you need in the app. And then finally, getting on the ship. So one of the things that's very unique is our cabins are techno- technology-led. Um, you can choose to go analog. Yeah, on, yeah. No, no judgment <laughs> at all. But um, it's all controlled by a cabin tablet. The temperature, if you want to play music, uh, what you're watching on TV, if you want to open or close the curtains, mood lighting. Uh, if you want to order uh, Ship Eats, which is our food delivery on the ship, or if you just need help and you want to call a sailor services representative to come through and, and help and answer some questions, all those things are done on the tablet, which I think helps with alleviating that piece of it. And then you essentially have your map, uh, map of the ship, what to do, activities, how to book them in your hand. So if you choose to, you can go talk to another person. <laughs> Again, analog, no judgment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As a, as a millennial, I, I live both sides of the house, right? <laughs> so it's options again, isn't it? It's, it's all about your options and making it as smooth as possible. So if you don't choose to use the app, we have people on deck across the, across the experience that will help you. But if you do, making it as easy as possible, making sure that that experience is smooth as well. And then we have a ton of digital screens where you can uh, map out where you are. You can look at the latest lineup. If you don't want to, some people want to unplug too. They don't want to look at their phone. So having, making sure that's also core and stays there as well is a big part of making sure that you, you feel like you're being informed without it being overwhelming. But then again, so yeah. still ask somebody if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> and what about Qualtrics? What, where does that, your relationship with Qualtrics fit in this? That's a really good question. So Qualtrics, uh, again, we were a new brand. Um, and uh, when we initially started or engaged with Qualtrics, it was 2020. Yeah. <laughs> I think we started having conversations in January, right before everything started going a little crazy yeah. and haywire. And one of the biggest things was we were a new brand and we had no benchmarks like at all. And I, I think we were very thoughtful and mindful about not comparing ourselves or setting our standards with our competitors. Nice. We were very different in the space. And also, it kind of sets you up to maybe unrealistic goals as well. And so it was critical to us that we understand some critical questions, at least from a digital standpoint initially, of like, what are people enjoying about the experience? What are people not enjoying about the experience? What are we missing? What's a gap that we may not be seeing which helps drive the product innovation, which is what I'm very um, passionate about. And as well as what could be a conversion blocker? Because you still have to be at the yeah, end yeah. of the day, right? So, like, it, it, I think that's the thing that I love about Qualtrics. This is not about the touchy feely, fuzzy metrics. It's tying it back to something that you know, an OKR, a KPI, depending on what we're here at, um, that can help you with understanding and continuing to iterate and test and learn. 
Um, and so for us, we wanted to really get a pulse on what was going on digitally first, because we still didn't have a ship. Yeah, yeah. And then we were on pause for a year and a half. And so uh, we first started with their site intercept surveys. So throughout the digital journey, just making sure that we understand either if you're abandoning the booking process, if there's something about usability on the pages, and then ultimately what happened post booking, just to get an understanding and a lay of the land. And that's been very powerful to us in collaborating one with our digital product owners, but also our tech staff. And then how do we, like I said, core cap passion of mine is product innovation. Um, so being able to feed those roadmaps as well with this consumer insight and put uh, some value to it so that we can get that buy-in from executives too. So if we were to zoom out for a moment on everything that we've talked about here, can you tell me a little bit more about how the whole thing fits together and, and what that end result means for your customers as well? Um, so I think our ultimate end game is making it all connect together. So when you first engage with us as a brand, whether it be offsite, like through our social channels, uh, through forums, et cetera, to when you reach our, our properties, our social properties, to when you reach our website, um, what happens on the app, and then getting that insight, even if you choose not to book with us or it's kind of a collaborative like layup, so to speak, using a basketball term, <laughs> it's just this March Madness. But uh, what even our prospective sailors, that's what we call our customers, are saying to the call center, you know, and are they talking about something that was missing in the digital experience that we need to make sure, which is why we connect with them very, very frequently as well to understand what's going on there and how we can meet a need where we're driving down service calls that are avoidable uh, and making sure they're they're directly booking. And we're making sure that people who are more intently ready to book are connecting with us. Of course, we're happy to help one way or the other. I just want to make that very clear. Um, and then... Um, after, which is a really big piece for us. And there's a very super intense survey, if I may say so myself. I partner with the team that does that runs it, but that post voyage survey is super critical. Like, what is that overall satisfaction? What drove that satisfaction? What drove lower satisfaction? What is it that you think about the product as a whole that we can continue to iterate on? And that is shared organization wide. It goes from um, our marketing, planning, and strategists to the actual ship experience crew. And they're constantly looking at it and actually tweaking real time. You know, maybe this should, you know, we got to figure out a better messaging strategy if we have to cancel a show. Or, you know, we know that this show tends to be way more popular. So do we add another um, set in the, in the schedule of, of the itinerary to make sure that we're accommodating everyone that we can? Because we know it drives high satisfaction. So things like that. The food. Um, uh, how they enjoyed the different ports that we were at, because uh, that helps us with our planning. So across that piece of it, it is really just constantly tapping in, I would say, is the strategy and pulsing in and pulsing out and understanding what consumers want, depending on where they are on the journey. And then how does it all connect together so that we're making sure we're setting expectations up front, if you're thinking about more upper funnel activity, but then also what are things that we can tweak in the middle or in the end that continue to encourage high satisfaction and repeat bookers. And although this is a daily tech podcast, we have business leaders listening, looking to learn on how people are improving experiences, etc. I am aware that there is a passionate cruising community out there. <laughs> uh, maybe just looking for Virgin um, Voyages on the, the Spotify or Apple podcasts, etc. So for those people that are listening and I have stayed to the end, is there anything you can share about what we can expect from Virgin Cruises in the future? Maybe a few teasers you can leave us with. I appreciate you can only uh, share so much, but is there anything you can leave us with? If I told you, I might have to kill you. Uh, <laughs> what I can say is I'm really excited for the launch of our two ships. So we have one in May, uh, Resilient, which is doing a Greek itinerary. That's going to be amazing, continuing to lean into these amazing new destinations. Um, and then we have Brilliant, uh, which is another part of Europe that's coming through in December. Um, I say keep looking for the amazing programs and experiences. I think a big part of our strategy right now, outside of showing and showcasing our proof points, or our pillars of, you know, being adults only, being highly rated, is really about um, how do we, you know, level up, you know, core Ex, uh, times or experiences. So one of the things that we do is these immersive experiences that ties to holidays. So whether you celebrate, 
you know, Christmas, we're talking about Boxing Day, talking about whatever holiday that you are, like, how do we really level up that experience and make sure that you know that that's what's going to happen if you don't have plans for the New Year's or things like that. Or Valentine's Day is one of our favorite days. It's the anniversary of us actually launching our website. Um, and so when we're on those sailings, how can we make them even more special? So I think those are like the aha, really nice to have moments that get people excited to book, but then ultimately get, get them super excited and memorable of their experience after they've gone on and makes them think about coming back again. I think that's the big one. And I mean, JLo, we have some really cool stuff with JLo coming. Whoa. It's Jennifer Lopez, yes. uh, including our Limitless Voyage. Uh, that's happening April 14th. She might be making a surprise experience. I cannot confirm or deny if that's true. <laughs> um, and continuing our partnership with her, because that's definitely been very fruitful. Fantastic. And I'm incredibly impressed that you're from the U.S. and you know what Boxing Day is, is it? <laughs> the U.K. are my U.K. brethren. <laughs> I love them dearly. I work with them very closely. So. A little moist in there, here and there. <laughs> now, obviously, as X4 comes to an end, I'm curious, when you are uh, reflecting on the keynotes, the conversations that you've had on the show floor, what are you going to be thinking about on uh, that, that drive or plane ride home? I hate that I'm saying this, but I'm super interested in uh, that journey mapping that they're doing, that optimization and the digital experience analysis that they, the, the tool that they're looking at. Like, how can we augment what we have today as a virgin to make it even more robust and really understand like the idea of, you know, AI is a little scary, <laughs> but it also is the future. And, you know, wherever we can embed it in a way that helps us to learn and, and, and learn more about our customers and making the experiences better for them, even better. So I definitely am I'm looking forward to talking more about that with my connects. At oh, awesome. And now we're all back on the road, but visiting conferences, et cetera. We've either got a big pair of headphones on, listening to music, or reading a good book. I'm going to ask you to leave something now for everyone listening, and that is, is that a book that you can leave everyone uh, listening with that we can add to our Amazon wish list that you recommend, or a song that we can add to our Spotify playlist? All I ask is, what are you going to leave us with and why? I'll give you two. Oh, okay. And then you cut out whatever you want to get. <laughs> um, my favorite book that I actually continue to revisit on an annual basis is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Yeah. Um, I really... It's in a world where everything is a priority. Yeah. It makes it hard to understand what's a priority. And I think uh, when they talk about the the fact that, you know, being, I think what was really powerful to me was one quote where he said, um, if everything is important, how do you know what really is important? Mm. And I just sat there and paused. Yeah. And it's all about, you know, thinking about the things and working on the things that you can actually change. You can't change being popular. You can't change being compared against someone else. Um, but you can prioritize and work on and what is in your control are things like being kind, being human, being collaborative. Um, and so I'm very team finder zen. <laughs> <laughs> and so I love this book, especially when I see like people on my team who are getting maybe stressed out over like the day to day minutia and working at a startup is not a mark. And so like I, I feel like that book helps center you and makes you focus on what's the most important thing. Um, and then in the theme of that bonus yeah. answer, uh, one of my favorite artists is Thames. She's a Nigerian artist, T-E-M-S, um, and Free Mind. So the idea that, you know, the, the world is full of and then gives you a bunch of anxiety and worry and stress. So how do you work beyond, acknowledge that it's there, work beyond that, and ultimately get to that free mind by doing, you know, doing the right thing. So those are my two. Incredibly cool. Well, <laughs> consider the song on our Spotify playlist and the book on our Amazon wish list. And for anyone listening, just want to find out more information about Virgin Voyages. Maybe keep a lookout for if J-Lo is going to make an appearance or not. What is the best starting point? <laughs> Can't confirm or deny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what is the best starting point for all things Virgin Voyages? Definitely virginvoyages.com. Yep. It's my baby, so be kind. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way to get a ton of information around us. Find us on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. Handle Virgin Voyages as well. We actually have a really cool dance challenge going on. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the ad where we did Karma Chameleon. Yes, yes. Sir. Um, and so it's been going wild like gangbusters, the actual dance challenge. So social has been really popping and it gives you a really great also bird's eye view or first person view of what's going on 
on the ship too, if you ever wanted to just get an idea without stepping on the ship. Awesome. Well, I'll add all those links to the show notes so people can find you nice and easily. But I know you're incredibly busy back-to-back meetings here, so a big thank you for taking the time. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. It was an absolute delight to get Tamara on the podcast. I think she's one of the coolest people I've spoken with here, and her passion and enthusiasm for all things cruising really shine today. And also the role of technology in making business more human really stood out for me, but I'd love to hear your thoughts if anything resonated with you here. So please email me now, techblogwriter at outlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, just at Neil C. Hughes. I'd love to bring you into the conversation. And if you're someone that likes cruising, I'd love to hear your opinions on the approach that Virgin are taking. Whatever it is, whether you've got questions, other sides of the argument you'd like to add, send me a message now. We'll keep this conversation going. But that's it from me. So I'll be back again tomorrow. I've got a great guest lined up for you already. So hopefully you'll join me again there. But just a big thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. (laughs) 